All right, so let's set up our scene for a Spider-Man swinging animation. Let's go over to Append. Let's bring some buildings in. So if we navigate over to our assets, go into the buildings, buildings.blend, collection. Uh, we can bring in one of the five buildings or we can bring in all of them. So let's just do all. Hit Append. And thankfully these are already scaled up to real world scale. So we don't have to worry about sizing them up or down. In my mind's eye, when I imagine this shot, I'm, I'm imagining Spider-Man swinging out from behind a building, going real low on some cars in, a, in kind of a building alley of building a street that's like, there's buildings on either side, and he's like swinging through the cars, and he gets real close to the cars, but he doesn't hit the cars because he's Spider-Man. And uh, then he swings up, and he does a flippy thing or something, and then he swings off. This is the process for creating a Spider-Man shot. It's just chaos. Let's arrange these buildings in a way that would work for that nonsense. I'm gonna create a little intersection right here. And since these buildings are so non-specific, we can duplicate them and change the materials slightly to create the illusion that we have a bunch of building models. Something that's nice about these building models is that they are fully customizable. So we can just raise the roof on this one, edit mode. We select part of the building, hit control L that'll give us the whole section of the building. We can shift D that up and just make the building a little bit taller if we need it. Okay, so I'm imagining Spider-Man is going to swing in like this, go low to some cars in that intersection, swing up and then nail a web to that building and swing around that way. When you're setting up shots like this, the most important thing to keep in mind is physics. If it's not physically possible in reality, then it's gonna look like it's not real. So now that we have our building set up, we can go ahead and import Spadoto. So let's go over to our collections and let's go ahead and hide those buildings. And we can just name this uh, uh, environment because it's important to stay organized. It'll save your soul. All right, so let's go ahead and append that Spider-Man model. Alright, once again, you can see that we have all this junk that we don't need, so we can just select Spider-Man and his rig, hit Control i and delete all that. So now, let's go ahead and hide Spider-Man again, bring back in our buildings, and let's create a path for Spider-Man through these buildings that he can snap to and to help us animate. So we're going to start with a Bezier curve. Where are you? Curve. Cool. Let's scale that up, and trace out Spider-Man's path through these buildings with this Bezier curve. So he's gonna swing around that building right there, and he'll probably have some upward momentum coming around the side there. And then, cool. So he shoots some webs right here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move these buildings. I feel like having the intersection a little bit later might work better for this shot. We have the bottom of his swing happening in the intersection, so he can swing through some cars, maybe. Might look, ooh, ooh he, swing, he swung through cars. That's crazy. And then let's go ahead and hit E to extend our curve. Cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and go into the viewport display settings and hit in front so we don't have to worry about this being obscured by buildings. Let's just make a few adjustments to help us with our animation. And then extend that again, bring him out of there. He'd probably swing down a little bit. The thing about this is that it does not have to be perfect. You just want to start animating as soon as possible so you have as much time as possible to make as many tweaks as possible. You're creating human movement from scratch, which is very difficult. And so what's really going to sell it is all the little tweaks and imperfections that you add with your brain to the chat. What am I doing with my life? All right, now that we have our Spider-Man animation path set up, let's add that to a new collection to stay organized. Add a new collection. Let's name this animation. We're gonna put all of our animation tools in here uh, So we can just toggle them on and off whenever we need them. Very useful. Let's actually rename this curve to Spider-Man Path. Bring that into animation. Cool. So now we can toggle that on and off. Toggle the buildings on and off. Let's also take Spidey out of the environment because he ain't an environment piece. He's the central character in this beautiful story. Alright, so let's go ahead and snap Spider-Man to his animation path. So let's hide the environment, 
and bring Spidey back in. Where are you, Spidey? There you are. So, the thing about animating Spider-Man on a path is that I've found it's useful to, instead of snapping Spider-Man's rig right to the path, give it a, an intermediate empty in between the rig and the path. So that way you can rotate the empty and it'll rotate Spider-Man without messing up the rig because there's weird rotation problems in Blender that I don't know how to fix. So this is the workaround that I found works best. So if we select the rig and go into pose mode, uh, let's select the bone that is at his center of gravity because that is where we want to animate from. Let's go ahead and click Shift S, cursor to selected, and let's go out of pose mode into object mode and we're going to add a new empty. Cool. Now let's go back into Spider-Man's rig, parent it to the empty. Make sure to do keep transform. Cool, so now if we rotate the empty, we rotate all of Spider-Man with no problem. So let's label this Spider-Man empty. And let's bring that into the animation collection. Cool, so now if we want this empty to snap to the Spider-Man animation path, we can go into the constraints setting, add a new object constraint, and we want to use the follow path constraint. And so now if we set the target to Spider-Man path, it's gonna disappear. But if we click numpad period, we can find where it went, which is nowhere near the path. However, if we hit Alt G, which resets the position of any object in Blender, um, it'll snap right to the path. And then we can hit period again, and there we go. All right, now that we have our Spider-Man empty snapped to the path, we can go ahead and animate it moving along that path. And we are going to be using the offset value to move Spider-Man along the path. So let's set that to zero in the beginning of the animation. Press I to add a keyframe. And then let's go to our top-down view and get a sense of how long it would probably take Spider-Man to swing through these buildings. So let's bring the buildings back in. I'm gonna use my cursor to just guesstimate how long this would take. I'm gonna hit play and then time it out. Let's go ahead and set the end of our animation to be 136. And let's go ahead and set the offset value to negative 100, which is the end of the path. Then we'll set another keyframe and we have Spider-Man moving along the path. However, you might notice that Spider-Man is speeding up and slowing down at the beginning and end of his animation, which we don't want because he's already moving, he's already in the air. He would have a consistent speed already for the beginning and the end of the shot. So with the empty selected, let's go ahead and open up the graph editor. If you haven't used the graph editor before, it basically represents your keyframes on a graph which gives you really fine control over the speed and value of your keyframes. So if we hit A to select all of our keyframes and hit numpad period, and you can see right now that this offset value has a Bezier curve to it, which is not great because that's what's causing it to speed up and slow down, which we don't want. We want a consistent speed. We want a linear animation. So to do that, we can select these keyframes, just these two right here, Press T and change that to linear. So now, Spider-Man will have a consistent speed throughout the whole animation. All right, so we've got Spider-Man moving along the path here. I'm gonna move into solid view because it's easier for me to animate in that way. So in my mind's eye, I'm going to imagine that I'm Spider-Man and I'm swinging around this building. If I was swinging around that building, I would have one arm out like this and I would probably the momentum from swinging around that building would tilt me this way. So. Let's go ahead and tilt Spider-Man that way, towards what he's swinging from. So, now that we got that, let's set our first rotation keyframe. Now if we move forward a bit, he would have rotated again because he still has the web pinned to that building. Cool, that looks fine. And you know what, let's go ahead and uh, lock and hide our offset because we will not need that again. So if we take a look at our animation right now, you can see that Spider-Man, once again, speeds up and slows down in a way that isn't convincing or realistic. So what we're going to want to do is hit Shift-E in the graph editor and change this to linear extrapolation. That way the animation will continue past our keyframes, which is what would happen. You know, if you 
jumped off, don't jump off a building, but if you jumped off of a building and you did a front flip, you would keep rotating until you hit the ground. Like an object in motion stays in motion unless there's an outside force which changes it. I'm butchering that, but that's the basic idea. So if you have Spider-Man rotating in a certain direction, he needs to keep rotating in that direction to maintain convincing physics until he does something like shoot another web or kick off a building or, some, or something like that, and then you can change his momentum. But until then, you want to have him moving and rotating at a consistent rate. So you can see we have a really weird rotating Spider-Man moving along this animation. However, I don't see that as a problem. I see that as an opportunity to add cool flips and stuff to this animation. Because if you were rotating like this, and you just didn't have it, you were swinging around a building, you don't have a choice, you're gonna start rotating backwards, so what are you gonna do about it? You're gonna maybe use your legs to reorient yourself, and then you're gonna shoot webs in a way that would stabilize. All right, so going around this building, I feel like he would be rotating a bit more clockwise. So I'm going to take the Y rotation and change that a little bit. So now you can see that looks good, and you know what? That sets us up. You can see it does a little flip right here, and then he would be perfectly rotated to shoot webs onto these buildings and swing through the intersection. We got our rotation up until then, and then right there, he would be shooting those webs, which would change his momentum, so we can go ahead and set a rotation keyframe right there. So if you're rotating through the air like this and you shoot webs on the buildings, those are going to stabilize you and you're going to start rotating a different direction, which is probably backflip direction. So let's take Spider-Man, move him forward a few frames, and let's reorient him and get him swinging as if he was holding onto these buildings. Add another rotation keyframe. So when we added those keyframes, we got some curviness to these keyframes, which we don't want because he would still be moving at a consistent speed uh, while rotating. So we need to maintain that. And to do that, we can select these keyframes right here, hit S, X, and just scale that in a bit so that he really only starts changing his rotation once he shoots those webs. Cool. And now we obviously don't want Spider-Man to be going crazy through the rest of this shot. So, let's move to here. And let's reorient Spider-Man to a position that would be convincing. If you're swinging through an intersection and you're, the webs are behind you, you'd probably be swinging up a little bit. So, let's set a rotation keyframe there. Cool, and if you are rotating like backflip direction, then you might as well just do a backflip. So let's have Spider-Man do a backflip. So to do that, I'm going to just change this X value a little bit. Boom, easy. However, I feel like he starts rotating too quickly, so I'm going to take this keyframe and rotate that a bit to change the speed. Cool, that looks good, and once he gets to that position, he's going to shoot a web at the building, which is going to change his momentum again, so let's add another keyframe. And then swinging around that building, he would rotate like this. Swing out a little bit. All right, set a rotation keyframe there. All right. This is feeling pretty good. And I know it looks super janky, but that's just how it's going to look until you're like 90% of the way there. It's just the name of the game, unfortunately. That's what makes it so rewarding when you finally have a completed shot that looks good. It's like, you should have seen this while it was being made because it looked awful. <laughs> All right, now that we have our rotation ready to go, we can start moving on to Spider-Man's individual body parts. I'm gonna go ahead and bring our Spider-Man rig back into here, and I'm gonna hide the Spider-Man empty. So if we go into pose mode, you can see we have all of the options for animating Spider-Man. And I'm actually going to split my view into two, um, give me one wider look and one closer look. I'm going to set one of these to material preview and turn off all of the display. So that way, 
we can see Spider-Man without any of the janky animation stuff to see if his body movements look natural. Um, so let's just keep this off to the side here to keep a good idea of what it actually looks like. So first off, let's remember to fix the inverse kinematics. So if we hit the hand bone, go over to miscellaneous over here, set this to FK, which is forward kinematics as opposed to inverse kinematics. And we want to do the same with the feet. Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn off everything else that we're not going to be using right now, which is everything besides the spine and arms and legs. Cool. So now we have a nice clean rig to animate with. And I'm going to start with the hip bone because I find that's just a nice place to start. It helps uh, lay a solid foundation for the rest of the animation. So if I were Spider-Man and I was swinging around this building, I'd be like, I'm going to kick my legs out while I do this because that's what Spider-Man does. So if we hit R and then X and then X again, we can rotate this bone along its X axis, which is the proper way to rotate your hips. I mean, I guess you can also get a little funky with it, but if you're Spider-Man and you're swinging around a building, you're going to want to do XX. Cool. So we got his hips leaning forward a little bit, swinging around that building. Let's set a rotation keyframe. If we move forward a little bit, he would probably in an attempt to gain some speed going around this, bring his legs up a little bit more. So I'm going to animate that up a little bit more. And then once he kicks out of that swing, he would probably extend his legs back to normal. When Spider-Man is in free fall, I find it works well to have his hips and legs kind of trailing behind him a little bit, like so, looks good. Once he swings like that, he obviously would be kicking his feet up again. Looks good. Same thing. Bring his legs back a little bit. Cool. Now we have the hip bone animation for the whole scene. Next, let's do the upper torso animation. We really want to work from the center of gravity out. So we did the hips, and on the other side of that, we have the upper torso. So let's do that next. So if you were Spider-Man and you were swinging around a building, you would probably turn your body towards whatever you're holding onto. Let's turn Spider-Man's body a little bit towards that building. Set a rotation keyframe, move forward a little bit, extending back a little bit to stay holding on to that building. Cool. And then once he's in free fall, we would want to arch his back a little bit because he's a sexy Spider-Man. And then in swing position, I imagine he would crunch his body up a little bit. It's all just using your imagination. Looks good to me. Next, I'm going to animate the head because I find that if you animate the head, it helps inform the arms and legs because if you have an idea of where Spider-Man is looking and what he's thinking, then you can imply what he would be doing with the rest of his body. So if I was swinging around a building, I would probably want to know what's on the other side. So I'm going to orient Spider-Man's head looking and peeking around the side of the building. Now, once you're around the building, you would be... Looking at what you got there. Cool. And the thing with the head is that if you just change the rotation, it, you're going to get some wonky results. So you want to change the location as well. Cool. So if we hit I, we can set both location and rotation as a keyframe. Cool. And if I was doing a backflip midair, I would probably want to stretch my head back a little bit to see where I'm going. Cool. Then I would want to be looking at the ground because you don't want to hit that. So I find when animating Spider-Man shooting webs, it makes it look convincing if you have him look where he's shooting the web because then you can kind of imply his thought process. So let's have him first look at the right building because that's where he's going to shoot his first web. However, make sure to not animate anything that you can't do yourself. Set so keyframe there, and then he would immediately look to the second building, over there. And if I was Spider-Man and I was swinging through some buildings and I had a bunch of downward force and then I suddenly started swinging, you'd probably, your head is not very well supported on the human body, so you, your head would smack down into your chest real quick as you hit that bottom of the curve. Bring Spider-Man's head down a little bit like he's going, doing an owie. And then right after that, he snaps his head back up, maybe a little bit further back than he would like because you're recovering from that movement. Cool, again with the backflip. Get the jump on whatever you're doing next, so you'd probably look down a little bit. Then at the building where you're gonna shoot that web, and then you shoot that web, and you're looking where you're going next. All right, so now we got some good head animations. We can see that Spider-Man has a little bit of a soul now because you can see him thinking. 
All right, so next I'm going to do the legs. I like to start with the parts of the body that influence the animation the most, and working our way out, the legs are the next heaviest thing. If you're Spider-Man, you know the Spider-Man dude. He, he swings his legs out, so it's obvious. So let's, let's swing those legs out, yeah? Set a rotation keyframe, another rotation keyframe. Try and make it look natural. Let's have these little legaroonies bent a little bit. Cool, and as he finishes the swing, I imagine he would stick his legs out a little bit to stop that rotation. You know how if you're in a roller chair and you're spinning around and you bring your legs in, you start moving, spinning faster? That's kind of what we're going to emulate here. So, if Spider-Man is swinging and he brings his legs in right here, let's uh, go ahead and bring our hip bone back in. And where's our keyframe right here? Let's, let's fix that. Let's bring that in like that. That looks good. Let's go ahead and let Spidey's legs relax. And they also have a tendency to move towards each other because of physics stuff. Since we have a big change in momentum here, let's go ahead and add a keyframe right there. And then once he finishes the swing, those legs would be up in true Spider-Man fashion. And since he's swinging so fast, I feel like that would actually happen sooner. So there we go. If he's doing a backflip, we could do the thing again where he brings his legs in close to him and then kicks out to speed himself up. <laughs> oh, you bootylicious Spider-Man. And I find it with the arms and legs, it helps a lot to have them trailing behind their parent bone a little bit. Because, you know, if you're swinging your leg, the bottom part of your leg is going to be getting that momentum a little bit later than the first part of your leg because of that hinge. These start rotating a little bit later, and then straighten out once we get there, and then rotate them back in. Cool. That's feeling really good. With the arms, there's an added step. You need to adjust the shoulder. Because if you just have the shoulders straight and you move the arms, it's just gonna look very robotic. You need that nice shoulder movement. All right, after he finishes his swing, I'm going to have him return to a normal arm position. From there, I'm going to have him move into cannonball position. All right, and I actually feel like that's a little bit too quick. So I'm going to slow that down a bit by grabbing these keyframes and moving them over. Cool, that feels better. Now let's have his arm extend out, shoot that web. All right, now let's change this to a mid-swing kind of position. We can kind of keep this general shape until he lets go, <clears throat> which is now. So let's reset the arm. All right, that looks like a decent start to the arm. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Same technique as every other body part. I'm just gonna speed this up. See you on the other side.